Hello and welcome to Data Diversity Talks, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers around data. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Dr. Wendy Lynch, the founder of analytic-translator.com. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is my career in data. A Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who can make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. And today we are joined by Dr. Wendy Lynch, the founder of Analytic uh, dash translator.com. And normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Wendy, hello and welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. I am so happy to be here. Thank you. We're excited you could join us. And so you are the founder of Analytic Translator or analytic dash translator.com. So what is your company and what is it that you do? Yeah, I have two jobs. So um, I am an independent consultant. So I consult with large organizations about applying big data to human capital management issues. So that is sort of my day job, I would say, where I actually act as an analytic translator most often. Then as I realized how much we need this role, I launched analytic-translator.com and have a book to help other people learn those skills uh, to try and fill the need. So what is an analytic translator? The easiest way to think about it is it's a person who speaks nerd and business. That's the way I explain it to people who aren't (laughs) in the field. But it's really three basic skills. One is that you have the ability to understand and listen to a business person or a business team in a way that you can hear and define what problem they are trying to solve that perhaps data could actually contribute to. And that you will translate that into words and tasks that data people will understand. The second thing is that then you know how to understand what the answers are or the problems are or the challenges have been and translate in such a way that the business can uh, make use of it and really comprehend what you're trying to tell them. And then the third thing that happens as a side effect is to build alliances between these two teams. Because I'm probably not the only one who has watched those relationships start to uh, get tense (laughs) or worse when you have the business and the analytic team not understanding what each other needs. Makes sense. Very big need for that indeed, I'm sure. (laughs) As we'll talk about more. Yes. Um, (laughs) So, but tell me, before we get into that, So when you were very young, just a child, you know, did you think to yourself, did you as a, you know, dream that I'm going to be an analytic translator when I grow up? Or what was it that you wanted to be when you were a kid? What was that dream? I was raised in a family of real nerds. And so I had a theoretical nuclear physicist and a microbiologist parents. So I knew I, I only kind of knew science. And so I thought I wanted to be a marine biologist. That was what I thought I wanted to be because I thought dolphins were cool. That was, that was where I started, I think. So yeah, um, unfortunately I get seasick looking at boats. So that, oh, no. yeah. that, that wasn't going to work. So yeah. <laughs> 
okay so well then so then how did that evolve so you um so where did you how did what did you decide to um as you grew up um let's go to college yes. you know where did you where did you go and what did you think about what was your initial major yeah I one theme that you will hear today is that I changed my mind a lot. So um, one of the things that I was really into as a younger person was I was very into sports of different kinds, played every sport I was allowed to play. And uh, I really was interested in exercise physiology and those kind of things. But I First, I changed around to a variety of majors from pre-med to engineering to this, to that, and the other. But I did land on um, what was called kinesiology, which is the study of human performance. And I uh, did an undergrad there and uh, really thought that that was going to be my area. And when I went into a master's program, This was one of the first of two mentors that changed the course of um, probably my life, at least my career. I ended up doing work with the person who was the uh, chair of the department, and he was the stats and research design guy. Mm. And what I figured out was if you worked with as the stats and research design person, you got to do research with everybody. So it didn't matter if this was the person who studied enzymes in muscle tissue, or if this was the person who measured push-ups, or this is the person who measured VO2 max and you know endurance performance. This guy got to be the one that analyzed all the data and could look at everybody's project. And I went there for somebody who changes their mind a lot. This was the perfect skill. So. That's what I ended up doing was getting into the measurement part and the research part and the stats part, and then went to a a doctoral program called Research and Evaluation Methods, which was really cool. It was interdisciplinary. So you did stats from epidemiology and stats from econ and stats from meteorology and stats from all these different things. And to non-nerds, that won't sound exciting, but to me... When you got to know all the different languages, you know, an epidemiologist calls it something, an educator calls it something else. One will always use logistic and one will always do ANOVA. You know, I mean, it just is how they're taught. But when you understand how all of them do it, then it makes uh, even more sense, I think. So that was that was my sort of college trajectory. I like it. Very impressive. Very interesting. Because you're right. It, yeah. <laughs> That's a, I love it. Um, so after school then, um, so you've, you've got this now deep dive into a lot of data. Yeah. Um, so where did you go from there? Well, continuing on the theme, I, uh, wandered around a lot. I, yeah. uh, I actually have been in a um, large business, like a, a large insurance company. That's where I went first, where they were doing the first on-site health and fitness facility that ever was put together, I think. And they wanted an evaluator on site to look at the impact of that on um, business outcomes and health and costs. So I started there. Um, But I have since been in pretty much every different um, type of location. So I went from there to academia because I wondered if maybe that would be a better fit for me. And what's what you find is that in academia, you can ask any question that you want. So you get a lot of freedom, but you don't have a whole lot of money unless you can get a grant. In business, when you're starting out, you don't get to ask everything you want because someone tells you what to ask, but at least it's funded. So I bounced around a lot. So um, went to academia, worked in startups, worked for large consulting firms, worked in big uh, industry, worked on my own. And it, it was funny because people would say, I thought you worked in healthcare or I thought you worked in insurance. I thought you worked in HR 
And my mom would be like, I can't explain what you do. What do you do? And it was the same thing that happened to me in school is I was just interested in so many different things. And I didn't realize that what I was doing was actually the same thing all the time, which was I'm a sense maker and a translator. And it doesn't matter what the topic is. If there is somebody there that can help each side talk to each other, it starts to make, it adds value to the situation. And I didn't even realize that until five years ago that that was what I was doing. So did, what did bring you to that conclusion? Well, the other mentor that I'll mention that changed the trajectory of my career um, is a person who was in the Department of Family Medicine with me. And her role was to help new physicians, the, the physician students, learn to talk more effectively to patients. And she had studied all of these different aspects of effective communication. I mean, just about, you know, a hundred different theories of communication. She was so good that I just glommed on and said, could you tutor me? Could you help me understand what it is that you do that makes it work so well? And we've ended up being lifelong friends. And she um, and I co-authored a book that came out in 2017 called Get to What Matters, which is a communication book, mm -hmm. which feels very adjacent to what it was that I was doing, but I actually felt compelled to get it written and disseminated because I feel like those skills have probably been as, if not more valuable in the field that I was in than the analytic skills. And it wasn't until I heard a podcast actually <laughs> in 2017 and the podcast uh, host said to this um, woman, her name is Greta, mm, I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you anyway. Um, so um, I was listening to this podcast and mm -hmm. She said uh, the the host asked her, "Are will we not have enough data analysts, if you know, good data scientists, to fill the need?" And mm -hmm. she said, "Oh no, 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 we're, we're going to fill that need just fine. What we don't have is we don't have people who know what questions to answer and know how to figure those out." And I just went, "Oh my God, that's me! That that's what I've been doing." I've been translating, this is so cool. So that's how I figured it out. And then during COVID, I actually was thinking about what I wanted to spend my time doing while we weren't traveling and doing conferences and stuff. And I, re I really thought, you know, it's time to put it into a format that people can use and learn from. It's very cool. Yeah. So, and just a couple of highlights here, I mean, uh, I love that you have so many interests and of course data enabled you to explore so many things because that's what it's so great about data, right? Is everybody right. needs it, everybody uses it. Yep. Um, the diversity of you know companies in our conferences, it's just amazing always. It just I love right. you know some of the companies that we get a chance to work with. Yep. Um and then, you know, what brought you here is being curious yes. and exploring and being open to uh, new possibilities, because I love that. I love that uh, you found somebody who just inspired you and, and motivated you to reach some, for something new and tie that back into to data. Yes, I think, I, I think it's important especially if people are just getting into their careers, mm -hmm. realize that there are so many people that you will run into who have something incredible to teach you. And you will learn from what they offer you. Yeah. Um, and you will learn from what it is that uh, they are doing and what they've accomplished. So um, it's, I, I, I think we often get into our own heads about what we're doing and we can learn from 
what I mean, le learning from you guys at Dataversity, the incredible things that you guys are all doing. That's what's so wonderful about your platform. Oh, and likewise. <laughs> Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. Wendy, with your background, so what is your definition of data? Yeah, data to me includes... Um, signals um, signals of an event or of an amount and something that's detectable uh, that documents that a behavior or a be or an event or a occurrence um, has happened and usually that ends up being um, collected and put into a format that's usable but I want to expand that just a little bit because if I'm having a conversation to with you and you are telling me what you need to accomplish with a particular business question, and I notice that Shannon has a confused look on her face, or I notice that um, Shannon doesn't sound completely confident that we are getting to the point that uh, she's trying to make. That, that, is, that is also a piece of data. Mm -hmm. And so we are always observing and whether I record, yes, I think she gets it or no, I think there's more for us to talk about, that is still data. So it's, I was thinking about that question and I know that there are official definitions, but any signal is a piece of data. I think that's very true. I love that definition. So any signal and yeah. you may use it or you, you may not, you may record it or you may not, but recorded um, structured data obviously are the things that we get to make sense of and connect with other pieces of data. And those are the things that are so important and useful. But there's also these other human ones that we have to make use of too. And we do, whether we know it or not, right? We're processing so much. Right, right. Every day. You may find yourself very irritated with somebody and whether you're noticing exactly what signal irritated you or not. <laughs> um. We, we do take all those signals, yes. Yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah. So uh, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and, and why? I think that it will increase for sure. I think the reason why jobs that need to incorporate data will increase is just because it's becoming ubiquitous um, and every organization is understanding and learning how to make better use of the data that are available to them. But the difference that I'm hoping will happen is that we won't necessarily silo the jobs into data jobs. I mean, I, I know that we all get irritated that data sets are siloed, makes us crazy that we can't put these data with these data. And I mean, it just makes you nuts. But in some ways we silo the data people too. Mm -hmm. So there's a, an, a group of analysts who report to a lead analyst and those analysts then get you know deployed to go work with other groups. And in some ways, wouldn't it be better if you had folks who have dual roles? So it, rather than just being data people, and some companies have that to a certain extent, or you may have a data division that's within one group that's different than in another group. But I do think we're going to have to be 
dual trained um, in the future, much more so than we are now, because it doesn't work. Data aren't useful unless they're in the context of people and the organization. And you don't have, you don't want to have people, only certain people who deal with people and only certain people who deal with the business and only certain people that deal with, with data. So I, I'm hoping that as we grow, we ask for people to find two things, let's say, or, or more that they, they want to do. Makes sense. So what advice then would you, and we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but what advice would you give to people looking to get into a career in data? Well, I think, first of all, realize that no matter how smart and trained you are today, everything that we know and do today is going to be outdated tomorrow. So that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But if I still... <laughs> If I still only knew how to do the things that I knew how to do when I got my PhD in 1986, we would be in deep trouble because everything moves so quickly and it's getting faster and faster and accelerating, accelerating. So don't think of yourself as I am only X. I am X on my way to whatever. So yes. think about what you're interested in and where you want to be continuing to learn. So I think I think that's the first thing is know that this is this is a journey. This isn't a, that you haven't gotten there and you pretty much never get there. Um, and once you think you're there, you're in trouble. Um, <laughs> and I've seen people decide, well, I'm going to retire because I if I don't retire, I, I have to learn something new. And what a sad situation, but that there's a lot of people who are like, look, I'm too old to do that. Well, you better not be, especially in this field. There's just so much to learn. Um, the second thing is also more of a perspective issue, which is no matter how unique a question is to you, somebody has probably thought of that question before and has learned a whole bunch of really cool things and may have applied it in a way that you haven't thought of. Mm -hmm. So be a student of a new area because it doesn't reflect badly on you that you can point to how it's been done 10 other times. It actually makes you more valuable because you save people a lot of time not reinventing the wheel. You have a perspective. And if somebody's saying, well, why don't we try X? You can say, well, you know, the four people who tried X didn't do very well, but if they, you know, shifted it a little bit, they did, they, it worked even better. So I find that we get quite myopic about our company and our approach, but if, and, and now there's no excuse. I mean, you don't even have to go to the library anymore, which is what you used to have to do. <laughs> You can get on to Google Scholar, you can get on to ResearchGate, you can get on to a variety of different sources and just wander around there and find it. So, you know, find the thing that you're interested in, but keep your eyes wide um, on the things that you can learn from everybody else. Such great advice. And I recently read a study that, uh, uh, people who continually learn uh, and go after, uh, try and learn something new almost daily, mm -hmm. uh, have a reduced risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Right? <laughs> it's not Even only for a reason. It's good for you. Yes. <laughs> Health benefits. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I'm finding that that advice is pretty, pretty common. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great advice. And it's so hard to push our boundaries. And it's so hard to, uh, to be curious and to, uh, but yeah, you're right. I, I've met some people who, who think they are the, 
the center of knowledge and <laughs> but there is there's so much to learn from so many people there is and i have seen some people report uh, research findings to mm -hmm. an audience that's been around a while who are just looking at them like really you think this is new you know um we did that back sure. in 1997 you know or whatever and so yeah it, it helps you make sure that you are aware and standing on the shoulders of people who can teach you something ah, indeed yeah. well wendy um so if somebody wanted to reach out to you for consulting, mm -hmm. how would they reach you? Well, you can uh, reach me at wendy or wendy at mm -hmm. analytic-translator.com mm -hmm. or wendy at lynchconsultingltd.com. I'm also on LinkedIn, easy to find. So, um, and uh, I'm always looking for uh, other people who are curious and interested in trying to solve tough problems. So um, happy to hear from anybody. I love it. And your books are on your website? They are on the, the website and they're also on Amazon. One is Become an Analytic Translator and one is Get to What Matters. I love it. And we'll grab those links from you and post those on the podcast page okay. as well. All right. So Wendy, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Shannon. I really appreciate being asked. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest podcast and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Till next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational articles, blogs, and webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Mm -hmm.